Hey guys, it's Logan and Chad here with Hydro 572. We took a trip down to the Spyderco outlet today and spent quite a bit of money. So rather than doing just a couple of them or going one at a time with first impressions, we're going to do sort of a new thing around here. We're going to try for like a knife talk and just see how it goes. And uh, so yeah, I guess I'll start. I picked up a Bird Kara Kara 2 in G10. This is my first Bird knife. And overall, I am pretty impressed. Spyderco has this tendency to really compete with their more expensive stuff with some of their cheaper stuff. And uh, I think the Bird is another example of that. It is strong competition for the Endura, even though it's made by the same company and it's cheaper. <clears throat> the edge is a little bit dull for Spyderco standards, and the fit and finish isn't... That's Chad's phone. And the fit and finish isn't really up to Spyderco's usual standards. But this is pretty much an Enduro with a couple of added features for half price, more or less. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I got a... I don't even remember what they called it. I just really loved the way it looked. I think they called it the crossbill. But, um... Yeah, first bird knife, I guess. Uh, first full stainless steel knife. Um, about 30 bucks. I really like it. Like, just like that. I don't know why. I really like that. The back lock's incredibly oh, I, strong on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking just to make it my car knife now that I got my car working again. But I might just carry this. <laughs> uh, got it in partially serrated because that's all they fucking had. If it were up to me, it would have been plain edge. But at the same time, you know, I had money burning a hole in my pocket. Uh, besides that... Don't really have a whole lot to say other than I really, I like it a lot. <laughs> they said they were going through a manufacturer change in China on the bird line, so I don't know if that'll have any effect on the quality of the blades that they're putting out, anything like that. I trust Spyderco to get that stuff done, but uh, just something interesting to be paying attention to. Now the blade that you guys have probably been eyeing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? We picked up the last uh, paramilitary two at the Spyderco outlet. Um, they are fucking good salesmen, because about 40 minutes after I bought this, I started thinking, I don't even really want this knife. So I think I'm just going to carry it for two weeks, and if I'm not absolutely in love with it, I'll probably just sell it. Yeah, I think I partially have some blame for selling this knife to Chad because I told him if he didn't like it and he kept it in like new condition he could probably sell it for what he bought it for or make a profit uh, so yeah that's cool that's one of the benefits of living close enough to the Spider Coast store that you can go and check stuff out just drive there I mean that's what we did we didn't even plan this we just drove Decided. there yeah. <laughs> back to the Kara Kara for a little bit jimping not really up to Spyderco standards, not as good as even their other Chinese manufactured knives. And that's sort of what I'm comparing to, by the way. The Edge wasn't as good as the Resilience or the Tenacious, but again, those are stamped with Spyderco. This is stamped with Bird. I understand that quality control is probably a little bit worse on these, but they're getting blades to you at a lower price. A full flat ground <clears throat> Endura costs you 70 and it doesn't come with G10 handles, which I very much prefer. I actually think the ergonomics on this are better than on the Enduras that I've played with. And you get this cool little decoration with the backspacer. They called that something. I don't remember what it was called, but they, they had a word for it. I actually really like this. This is one of the few knives that isn't jimped and has a thumb ramp, and I just I love the way the non-jimped thumb ramp feels. I don't. Really? <laughs> yeah. So we should add jimping or what? Uh, we'll see. I love how smooth it is. Just like I've heard that you shouldn't like stainless steel all handle knives because it's smooth. Uh, I don't know. Somebody said so. But with the two, they're not even really deep choils. But with the choils and with the sort of curved nature of the knife as a whole, it, it locks in pretty well. I'm not worried about it coming loose. Yeah, I'm not either. That's part of why I love that knife. Serrations very sharp. Why is Chad's knife sharper than mine? <laughs> Oh, I was corrected, by the way, guys. This is not called a chisel grind. This is called a saber grind. Duh! Um, apparently, the uh, full flat, or rather, the uh, full plain edge version is saber ground as well, which I thought was sort of a bummer. I wish they made a V ground version. It's, it's whatever. Yeah.
It probably uh, cuts just fine. Another thing to say about the paramilitary paramilitary two is uh, you can't just disengage this and have it fall down. That's probably because it's not really oiled, but I don't know. I thought that was something that everyone would be able to do as soon as they bought it. Yeah. And uh, the deployment on the car car is pretty... You gotta put some oomph into it. I assume... I could loosen it, but there's already some play side to side. Like I said, the fit and finish isn't really up to Spyderco standards here. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm sort of... Lately, I'm not digging on expensive knives that we've been buying. Like, the paramilitary, too. I think I would have liked it a whole lot more, except for that I kept hearing the phrase, perfect EDC knife. Like the Sebenzas people have talked about, like, buying it and expecting it to be, like was said, perfect EDC knife. And then, like, I get it in hand. It's very comfortable. I have no doubt in my mind that the S30V... And with this blade profile, that it'll cut like a champ, and it is very sharp. I... I don't know. I like the compression lock. It actually functions a little differently than I thought it did. It actually sticks... I thought it was just a liner lock in reverse, because <laughs> I'm stupid. Um, it actually sticks a tab from the liner lock equivalent up in between the stop pin. Kind of like that. Yeah, it's, it's actually really cool. I imagine it would be stronger than a liner lock. Give me that. And I, I'm... Getting there, disengaging it with one hand. I'm not. <laughs> uh, pluses, though, I really like how big the spider hole is on it. I can almost stick most of that pinky through. <laughs> uh, lanyard hold is also pretty pretty large. That is nice. <laughs> not Apparently, that I'm really a lanyard person, but... I get the little... Fucking lanyard hole for some reason, but uh. Chad's lanyard holes are bigger. <laughs> hey, good job, Spider Co. You sell me a duller knife with a smaller lanyard hole. What are you trying to say? <laughs> uh, another thing to add the blade centering in the crossbill is better than the paramilitary, too. I don't know if that's. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard paramilitary twos have this problem. I wonder if it's just because they're cranking them out as fast as they can, but I don't know. Yeah, the centering on both the birds is fine. But again, those are probably done both with less demand and just, you know, by cheaper laborers. So, actually, no, they shouldn't be better. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's not rubbing or anything, so. Oh, I like on the uh, crossbill how they made a wire clip out of stamped metal. That's, uh... That's, stamped wire clip? That's just... The worst of both worlds. <laughs> so we'll try out the birds really quick on the magazine paper. It is actually cutting the magazine paper. Sounds too good. It is too good. This this could use a couple swipes on the sharp maker. And of course the cross build will be fantastic because Spiderco has a fucking personal vendetta against me. <laughs> Don't know why I review all your knives positively. <laughs> they must have known that I was getting ready to say mean things about the Chicago in my review. What? Okay, well his... There we go. It evens out. No, fuck you. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah. We went down to the Spyderco store and spent all our money. And we didn't even get a fraction of the cool things we wanted. It's a good thing I filled up the tank. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that for another few days. Oh, guys, the Zabos are awesome. I wish that I had whipped out. Next time we go down there, I'm going to ask the guy if I can take some video. Because you see the picture of the Zabo and you think it's like a little bit bigger than the paramilitary. It's fucking that is, huge. That is a fucking honking <laughs> big blade. And the gold, whatever it's called, uh, lightning carbon strike, fiber. I don't know. Yeah, the lightning strike carbon fiber looks badass with the satin blade. And then the black carbon fiber looks badass they with the black blade. They figured that shit out. That, I want one of those. And if the Zabo fly is that cool, I want, an, I want a Zabo fly again. I'm going to spend my money. I don't think you um, can get a Zabo fly anymore. Yeah, I'll figure it out. The uh, Shemp Tough was really cool. If I had brought another bill, I would have gotten that instead. That was... Everything we played with was really cool. Guys, you, you don't know how dangerous it is to be getting paychecks and to be 20 minutes away from the outlet. It is just... <laughs> 
Because you do stuff like this. You walk in, and when you walk in, you had plans of all this awesome stuff that you were going to do, and you were going to buy stuff for your car, and you were going to invest this, and you know, buy this stuff that you really needed for your. And then you just walk out with more knives that are relatively similar to the ones you had. <laughs> like it's not like you're filling in the holes in your collection. You're just buying more of the same cool stuff. So in, a, in a few weeks, I might be selling this. Yeah. Just so you guys know. And we'll, if he decides to, we'll put it up on uh, Instagram. And we might make a video, but the buying scene and all is much better on Instagram. Just quicker responses. So, overall, pretty impressed with the birds. Like I said, fit and finish overall is sub Spider Co. standard. Though Spider Co. standard is pretty amazing to begin with. Like I said, I it's hard for me to not say that this knife is better than an Endura. And that's a really bad thing to say because it costs much less than the Endura and is made by the same company. I like the Endura better. Oh, why? Because you can open it better. Yeah, this is pretty tight still. I think I'm going to leave it that way just because I'm liking toughening up my t thumb. Um, and I am. From flicking these three knives open, I'm starting to build another callus across here. It's like thicker than the one that I had. And that's just from today. But, uh, yeah, I think after it either breaks in or I get it lubed up or I get it loosened just a little bit, I think, and I'm thinking of doing a zip tie mod too. I wonder if I could, like, glue a zip tie up in the little bird part. Um, I think that would be too close. I don't know. I, I'll play around with it. Maybe make a video about it. But uh, <laughs> the bird deployment holes feel just like a spider hole for all intents and purposes. You don't really, like, your thumb doesn't go into this part, so it's just pushing into this ridge, like always with a spider roll. Like I said, the jimping on this one, not as good as, maybe as good as the jimping on an Endura, not as good as on a Tenacious or a Resilience. Or the paramilitary. The paramilitary jimping is nice. It is a little bit finer than the Resilience, but it's very tacky. I like it. Oh, one thing I don't get... What's with the choils there? That doesn't. That's not very comfortable to use, I feel like. A, a lot of blades, I'm noticing more and more, have sort of forward choils, and they're not helpful. Like, I don't... It's not like you're cutting something that's, like, fine and you have to get the cut perfect, and for some reason you're doing it with your knife as opposed to scissors or whatever. It's not like you're doing it like this and your knife's wavering all over the place, but all of a sudden you choke up to here and now everything's better. Like... I'd actually just rather maintain my original grip, the one that I'm comfortable with. I feel like I'm more precise this way than choked up to here. I, like I don't know. Nice. I like that better. Yeah, I guess we're pretty much done. That has been our first impressions of three different Spyderco knives. Spyderco, thank you for being close by. Thank you for letting us come in and play with all your cool toys. Thank you for taking all of our money. <laughs> Shit, now I gotta start over for tires. <laughs> if you guys yeah. haven't been down to the Spider Co. store, it is such a cool experience because a lot of our experience on blades comes from videos and from uh, looking at blades online. And you just don't get the idea of what size exactly of a knife this is. You can look at the specs all you want and go, oh, blade 3.7 inches, whatever. It doesn't it doesn't communicate it the same way. I mean, you get to go hold those expensive blades, hold the domino, and, uh, you know, the Yulees and the Zabo folder and all that stuff. It is It's a really cool experience. If you guys have a knife outlet in your area, or even if you're just not making the trip up to, like, a Cabela's often enough, go handle some blades. It is a really fun experience. But, like, bring your wife along. And th This sounds drastic, but I'm being serious here. Bring your wife or girlfriend along. And let her hold your wallet. <laughs> this is one time where she can help you. <laughs> Alright guys, that's all we got. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more of the same. Hydra 572, signing out.